This is the upstairs seating area that I think is gonna be where the kids sit and watch movies. I love the fan. It's really hard to choose a fan for a small space. You don't want the blades to be too long. This is part of a series of a lake house build and design. We have one big project that we've been working on and that is a lake house. This series is going to cover the decorating process. It's going to cover this process being used room by room. We will also cover Kojo's cash cuts, which will help you design rooms on a budget. This episode is going to cover the sitting room. Welcome back to the Kojo channel. First in the decorating process, determine the purpose of the room. This particular room is going to have three, four, five, maybe even six different purposes. So we have to cover all of those. So this is the upstairs seating room. We're hoping that this will be a place for our guests to sit maybe early in the morning if they don't want to go downstairs. Maybe kids will play games up here. There's going to be a television up against this wall in between the windows. I really do see this room being the most personal room in the house and being much more casual and having a lot of lake family photos. We've been here for 16 years that we can pull out and put up and just show the history of the place. There's the light fixture up here just to give us a little bit of light. Um, it's, really, it's really more for show than anything. I want to use this room for additional sleeping area if someone wants to sleep on a sofa. I want to use this room for playing games, board games, cards, for eating, watching TV, sitting around, talking, drinking coffee. And I want to use this for a home office. We are hoping to work from here sometimes. So we're setting a desk against this wall with this task lighting and then another desk against this wall with its own lighting as well, so that my husband and I can work from here. So it's going to have quite a few different uses and it needs to be able to accommodate all of them using a very small space. Second, choose your overall look from Pinterest and magazines. This area is going to be used as a sitting area. So I'm going to Pinterest and to magazines and I'm going to look for dens that I like. I just want an overall look. Do not worry about execution at this point. Always remember that. Just tear out or pin those things that you like. Go back after you've pulled all of them and you'll see the undercurring theme and you can decide what color you want to go towards or what overall look you want to look for. But always go first to Pinterest and magazines and find the overall look that you like. I plan to use existing furniture in this room. Furniture that I bought for the old house before we tore it down. So I don't really have to make a lot of decisions regarding new purchases, but I do have to make sure that all of these pieces are used in this room. I also want to make sure that this is a very personal space. I want to have photos hanging all over the walls. I want to have photo books on the tables. I want to have card games and board games sitting around. And I want to have a nice place to sit and drink coffee in the mornings or have a snack. Third, choose your fabrics. Now I already had these pieces they were from the old house. But when I chose those pieces for the old house, I made sure that I chose neutrals, chose solids, because I wanted to be able to work with those for a long period of time. When you're on a budget, like me, you have to make decisions like that. And I'm very thankful that I did because now these pieces are coming into this little sitting area and they are seamlessly working. And I'm very happy that all I have to do is put in some fun pillows and a couple of throws to pull all of this together. I purchased my sofa on Overstock. It was a great price and it has proven to be very durable. I'm glad that I chose it because the size is perfect. In both houses, the sitting area is very small and it can accommodate a larger sofa. The wing chairs were purchased new in 1992. About 15 years ago, I had someone slip cover them for me and they are very neutral and go well with the sofa that I purchased. My budgets dictate that I use neutrals as much as I can. So I have a neutral sofa, I have neutral chairs, and on any investment pieces like rugs, you may want to consider neutrals there as well. If you are like me and did not buy an investment grade rug, you can go a little bit more crazy. I bought rugs on Overstock this time and I decided to go a little crazy and I bought some with orange and green and some other colors. They don't show dirt and they look pretty good. I bought some pillows from TJ Maxx to kind of spice things up a little bit. Not very expensive, they're very textural and they go well with the rug. Next, choose tile, flooring and countertops. 
We only have to worry about flooring in this case, and since it's the same flooring throughout, all I have to worry about is matching this neutral wood color. Next, choose your paint. Try to choose your paint after you choose your fabric. It makes things much easier. We are going to use a neutral paint that is the same on the baseboards as it is on the walls. I did this because most of the areas I'm decorating are very small. I don't want to chop them up. So make sure you consider that, especially with small areas. Choose your wood tones. You don't have to worry about whether or not your furniture matches the wood floors. A lot of people think they do, but you really don't. What you need to worry about is the wood tones of the furniture matching each other. In the case of the sitting room, I'm going to use painted furniture, mostly because it's already paid for, but also because it makes the room look less busy. Most of the furniture in this room is white. There's so much going on in this room. We have stacks of board games, stacks of books. We're using it as a home office. We have a TV in there. There's a lot of lighting and tables. There's a lot going on. So keeping the wood tones neutral, where they blend in with the walls, helps us keep it from looking so busy. Another item to think of is your tabletops. We are using all glass tabletops. That keeps rugs from being blocked. It leaves it feeling a little bit more open, and it doesn't add yet another element to the room. So consider glass tabletops when you're going through and picking your end tables, your coffee tables, or little side tables. Also, are there any existing pieces that you have to use in the room? For me, the answer is always yes. I have inherited pieces. I have pieces that I've owned for 20 years, 30 years. I have pieces that I've bought recently, thought I was gonna use somewhere else, but I'm gonna have to use them in here. All of those pieces are white, except for the coffee table that I bought, which is a glass top that I thought I was going to use in another space. Couldn't use it, so I decided to use it in this room. It's a little bit too big. I did not measure. Don't, don't, don't. We should always measure, but I did not measure, brought it back, and now I'm living with it. Now, I'm not gonna make that mistake again, but I'm sure I'm going to make other mistakes. And why? Because we're not experts. We're just trying to help you guys get to a certain place, but we make mistakes, and you're gonna make mistakes, and it's okay. And I think it's most important that you realize you're going to make some mistakes. And I have another happy mistake. That mistake is a larger table that I have in a walkthrough area in that same sitting area. That table was a kitchen table I used a long time ago in another room. I had it in storage, we pulled it out, and I put it there while I was trying to decide what pieces I was going to keep and what pieces I was not going to keep. As it sat there longer and longer, I realized that was a great place for it. It was kind of like a foyer table. So I left it there. I put a large flower arrangement and it really has worked out very well. I can use that table for eating. I can use that table for game playing. I can use that table for a lot of things and it looks great. So it's really kind of a neat area, but again, a happy mistake. Another new purchase in the same area are the two rolling desks that we use for the home office. My husband and I will both be working from that lake house quite a bit. So we decided to buy movable desks. These are desks that if I want to be a part of the group that is sitting and talking and drinking coffee and watching TV, I can simply roll the desk around and be able to work and see what's going on in the room and then roll it back and tuck it in the corner. It's nice to have that kind of flexibility. These desks were very, very inexpensive. We got them on overstock. So look into something like that. It doesn't have drawers. It didn't need drawers. This is a weekend getaway. I don't need to store things in drawers in there. So you can actually come in, throw your laptop on the desk and just start working, throw it back in your backpack and head back home at the end of the weekend. So I learned a few things when doing this sitting room and I want you to have some sitting room considerations that you think of when you're going through and doing your decorating. One of the things you need to think about is, is there plenty of room to walk around in the room? That's very important. You will want to leave enough room to walk around the coffee table, which of course is something I didn't do. Make sure you do that. It will make the room much more comfortable. Make sure you have plenty of tabletop space. Space next to chairs so you can put a cup of coffee, a book, a phone, some snacks. Make sure you have plenty of tabletop space on your coffee table. You don't want to have so many things on it that are decorative that you can't place a plate or a book 
on the coffee table. Next, have a lot of options for lighting. Floor lamps, table lamps, little bitty lamps that are sitting next to a chair on a tabletop. Just something to provide mood and something that can be used for task lighting as well. Have lots of throws. I'm not really sure what the deal is with throws these days, but everybody uses them. Everybody wants a blanket. So make sure you have a basket full of throws so people can grab them, snuggle up on the couch, and watch TV. Use an area rug. It doesn't have to be very big, but when you add the area rug to all of these neutral pieces I keep telling you to buy, it will really help the look and help give it a little bit more pizzazz. It also is great for absorbing sound. Make things easy to find. If this is really a guest sitting area, then your guests need to be able to get to whatever they need. So if you have coasters, if you have books, make sure they're in a place where they can see them from where they are sitting. Remember, everything can't be the thing. I've mentioned that we have so much going on in this room. So honestly, I think the only thing that is consistent is the fact that I'm using so many neutral items. Neutral furniture, neutral wall color, neutral pieces like chairs and sofas. That is really what is unifying this room. And be prepared to change your mind. You can change your mind. It's okay. What are Kojo's cash cuts for the sitting area? First, paint your ceiling, your walls, your woodwork, all the same color. It's much easier to paint that way, and it gives it a very unifying look for not a lot of money. Secondly, lighting. Use ceiling fans, so much cheaper. And in the case of the sitting room, use very inexpensive tabletop lighting, floor lamps, because in a game room, they could get knocked over. You don't wanna lose anything valuable. Look at discount sites, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Overstock, Amazon. That's where you can get some really great pillows, throws, rugs. I like to go to the high-end sites first, then I search for those same items on the discount sites. In most cases, I can find something very similar, sometimes the exact same thing. Third, use what you've got. It's okay. You bought it, you paid for it, use what you've got. It will give the room a much more original look and you won't have to stress out over your budget. Fourth, shop garage sales, shop Facebook Marketplace. People will sell photo albums, photo frames, lighting, throws. I bought the prettiest throws I have from a garage sale. They had run them through the cleaners. They were Pendleton blankets. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I got them for nothing. Shop garage sales, shop secondhand. Fifth, buy solid colors for your investment pieces. I can't say this enough. Sixth, when buying pillows, just buy the pillow covers. Use your existing pillows as the inserts. You'll save a lot of money. So now the room is finished. I feel like it has a very cohesive and cozy look. In fact, my husband and I find ourselves sitting there in the mornings when we get up because it's so comfortable and so warm. What I love about it is the fact that it didn't cost me very much money and it still is my style. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a room that's going to be your style. I hope these tips are helpful. This process works every time, and we're gonna use this going forward as we decorate the rest of the house. So please stay tuned, we have a lot to show you.